In this video, I'm running down some of the most common mistakes that independent musicians make. Chances are you've made a couple of these yourselves. What's up guys, Brandon here from KDMR Music, the channel making you a more successful musician. Now, if you're new here, we do videos every single week about music marketing, music strategies, and also just helping you to understand the inner workings of the music business. So if you're interested in that type of content, tap that subscribe button and tap the bell icon so that you're notified when I post new videos. Now, today's video is one that is long overdue. Um, and you guys may have seen in the past, I used to have a video series called Real Talk, where I just, you know, very angrily spoke to the camera about things that musicians are doing wrong and that they need to stop immediately. Well, that series was out of character. I'm not really an angry person. So I decided I was going to bring back some of the advice from those videos and just give it to you straight, right? So this video is about four very common mistakes that I see artists making all the time. And like I said in the intro, the chances are you've made some of these mistakes as well. No worries. As long as it stops after today, we're all good. But I want to make sure that I highlight why these are mistakes and what is important for you to do instead so that you can actually see real growth, real traction, in your music career. So I've got a list of four mistakes and I'm going to go ahead and run them down. Now, the first mistake that I see artists making all the time is that they mistake spamming for promotion, meaning they do things in a spammy kind of way, right? If you go on their Facebook page, every single post is check out my new link, check out my new single, check out my video, right? Check out my merchandise. I'm selling this now. Go here to buy it. And what happens is artists tend to get defensive when I say, hey, don't post that here. That's spam, right? And they're like, well, I'm supposed to promote myself. How am I going to promote my music? And we have this idea that using social media in a way that it wasn't intended is actually promotion, right? Now, the difference between promotion and spam is very simple. Each, so, each, each social media platform has its own best practices and uses for the content on it. For example, when you're scrolling on Facebook, mostly you're scrolling to see what your family and friends are up to. You're not scrolling on Facebook to see, you know, what your favorite local musician is promoting, right? For that purpose, Facebook has fan pages and they have advertising tools to where you can post something one time and pay a little bit of money and have Facebook show it to audiences repeatedly, right? But because we don't want to spend money and because we don't want to do things the right way, we just say, all right, well, the traffic is free if I just post it on my personal page. So I'll just post it on my personal page a million times. And then I'll go and add a bunch of people that I don't know onto my personal page so that they can see it. That's spam, and the reality is I leave all of those people in the friend request folder. If I don't know you, I'm not accepting your friend request. If I happen to accept your friend request, and then all I see is a bunch of your music videos, I usually hit that unfriend button immediately. So instead of using social media to spam people, I say, the best thing to do is go by the 80-20 rule when it comes to posting on social media. Make sure 80% of your content is just about your normal life. And if your normal life is going to the studio, cool. Post about going to the studio. Post about or sharing helpful articles or, or funny videos that you see, right? And then that other 20%, those can be the specific call to action videos that you create. Check out my single. Look at my new music video. Let me share this thing from my fan page that I shared over here right? And then use your fan page. Use the Facebook fan page um, where you can actually just post about your music all the time and do the same thing there. And whenever you have content from your, your fan page, you should share that from the fan page onto the personal page so that people who are just your friends see that you're doing something on the fan page and then they go in and follow you there as well. So all's well that ends well, but please stop spamming people on social media. It doesn't help you. 
Now, the second mistake that I see artists making all the time is not doing their proper research before they reach out to gatekeepers, curators, promoters, insert, you know, name here or title here in the music industry. There are a lot of people who reach out to me all the time asking me uh, to get them on playlists. I get the spam messages in my Instagram like, hey, man, I love your music. You should check out this service. And I'm like, I know you're clearly lying and you're clearly spamming because I don't make music. Right. So it's important if you are going to take the time to reach out to people in the music industry that you feel can take you to that next level, then you need to do research on exactly who those people are, what they do and what they value so that you know what you bring to the table as well. It is not cool to just get a list of curators off the Internet somewhere and just blindly send out the same message that goes along the lines of spamming as well. So don't do it. Do your research and then send out well thought out and articulated responses to these people. The third mistake that I see musicians making all the time is that they chase vanity metrics. Right. Instead of, you know, trying to build up their actual fan numbers and build up their email list, build up their text message marketing list and build up their customer base. Instead, we go for vanity metrics or metrics or numbers that make us look good to the average person, but they don't really mean anything in real life. And because we chase these vanity metrics, we're more susceptible to scams and spammers. Right. So. For example, the biggest metric people are looking for right now is Spotify streams. So if you're like, oh man, I need 50 people to stream my, or 100 people to stream my single right now, then instead of reaching out to your fans, you're like, hmm, what's the best way to get 100 people? And you find some website that says, hey, we can sell you a thousand streams for $10. And you're like, huh, that sounds good. I got $10. A thousand streams will make me look like a boss, right? Next thing you know, you've paid 80, 90, 150 dollars. You've got your thousands of streams, even hundreds of thousands of streams, but they're all fake streams and Spotify deletes your music from their platform because they found that you violated the terms of service. What's even worse than Spotify, you know, deleting you is the fact that if you have fake streams, they're not helping you at all. Because people that are fake streamers, they're not going to go in and follow you on social media. They're not going to click over to your website and buy your merchandise. They're not going to go and see what other things you have for sale. They're not going to buy concert tickets. So by spending all of this money on improper promotion, you actually rid yourself of the chance to actually reach real fans that can get you a better return. So not only was your music deleted from Spotify, you don't even have any fans to show for all those streams and you're short $150. So you absolutely want to invest in programs or invest in things that are going to actually result in real fans. And there's no shortcuts to that. You got to reach out to those fans and you got to build them one relationship at a time. If anybody can guarantee you a number of followers, they're lying and you need to stay far away from that service. But we talked about that in a previous video, so I won't uh, belabor the point here. Just know it's important for you to build real authentic relationships and stop chasing vanity numbers or numbers just for the sake of looking good. Chase people, not numbers. That's the moral of the story. Now, the final mistake that I see artists making all the time, and unfortunately it's the most common, is neglecting the business side of music. We are in the music industry, right? The music business, the business of music. Once you decide that you want to make your profession music, that means you gotta start treating it like a business. And the only way to treat anything like a business is to understand how that business works. So the music industry is a whole network and system of separate businesses that have slightly different models that work in different ways. You need to, as an artist, understand the revenue flows. You need to understand where your money comes from 
who the money is generated by, how you access that money, and what it means to have an ownership stake in music, right? And a lot of artists, what they do is they'll say, well, I can hire somebody to do that other stuff. I just want to focus on making music. And that's all well and good. It is totally fine to outsource the things that you're not good at. But you have to have a working knowledge of the industry, if for no other reason, so that you can audit the success of the people that you're hiring. The worst thing that you can do is have someone doing a task for you and they not know what they're doing. But because you don't know what they're doing, you're both lost. And all you know is, You just don't have enough money at the end of the day. You need to be able to see what's going right and what's going wrong. And the only way for you to do that is to actually learn the business of music. So check out this video in the YouTube card of my top five music industry books. Check out All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald Passman. Check out um, How to Make It in the New Music Business by Ari Herstan. Those are great resources that will help you understand the money flow in music and give you a super leg up ahead of all the other independent artists in your area. And maybe you guys can even form groups and you can teach each other, but it's going to help you keep more money in your pocket. And as an independent musician or independent business owner in general, every dollar counts. So you need to know what's going on with your money. So those are the four mistakes that I see musicians making all the time. Please don't let that be you. If you're doing any of those four things, if you're neglecting the business side, if you're not doing your proper research, if you're spamming people, right, don't do it. Don't chase the vanity metrics. All of those things are what are contributing to you being stuck in a perpetual state of starving artist. Nobody wants to be a starving artist. I like to eat. My kids like to eat. My wife likes to eat. We all need to eat, right? But it's not going to happen until you start taking your music career seriously and treating it just like a job. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so that you're notified when I give out weekly music industry advice. Uh, I'll see you in another video very soon. Until then, be safe, be well, keep dreaming, and work hard to make those music business dreams your reality. Peace.